All right, you guys, that was a fun draft. Thank you guys for coming out. Looking forward to this season. I just hope we get our games done on time so that the PR comes out. That'd be good. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace, peace. All right, bye. All right, draft day done. Um, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that I haven't heard from Garatina recently. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's gonna have a lot to say given how draft went. And What's up? Mish, great draft, but I have to ask you, why'd you get rid of Ironhead? Yeah, we got rid of Ironhead, you know, and we just found it. it's not very competitive. But you can't do this to me. I thought we were gonna have a good season. I mean, you got rid of all the fun. Is there a reason that you had to stack all of the Sandvale Pokemon together on one team when I drafted Poudon? Do we have to do that? Well, of course I do, because it's fun to oh, watch so, you get so back. We're gonna do this again. All right, that's cool. Uh, we decided to uh, pull some strings to make things more interesting. Why? We could revisit the, uh, the soul. Come on, there's no. No, I'm not giving you my soul. There's no need to mess with everyone's luck. The packs this season. Just, just let us play. We just have a good time. I think that's great. Right, we didn't even start. There's no need to do this. You know how much I sacrificed? Sorry. Yeah, just stay out of this. Let the kids play. All right. I got a PR to record. We're back. And by we, I mean just me. This is a solo recording. Welcome back to the SAPA PR podcast. It is the post-draft episode, long awaited. We did all that pre-draft content like a month ago. Now the draft came and went, and now it's time to talk about the teams. Uh, before we get into everything, I do want to apologize if you hear a lot of commotion in the background right now. My kittens have the zoomies, so if they start causing a fuss, uh, apologies. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to start by talking about JT's team. Uh, you've activated my trap card. All right, so right off the bat, we see Tyranitar first overall pick, right? That's really not surprising at all. Tyranitar is the top three Mon in the tier. Uh, and then he's surrounded it with a pretty solid uh, core of Pokemon that don't mind the Sandstorm. Which again, like if you're going to draft Tyranitar, you got to have, you know, something for the Sandstorm in mind, at least ways to take advantage of it and, you know, do what you need to do. Uh, he, so he surrounded Tyranitar with Gliscor and Scizor. Now, usually stacking a bunch of four times weaknesses is uh, not the best, but these three do cover each other pretty well. The only thing where there would be some issues are water types. And as we can see, kind of looking down the list, like Ludicolo's here, Slowking are here. These are great into opposing waters. Uh, so going back to talking about uh, Gliscor. So Gliscor is going to handle the fighting types that are trying to hit Tyranitar. Uh, all the ice types that are trying to hit Gliscor, Scizor's got them on lock. And then the fire types that are trying to hit Scizor, Tyranitar's got them. So the three of them pair together pretty well. Just have to watch out for Pokemon that have like a lot of good coverage to where they could possibly fit all three of those types into one Pokemon. And that that will definitely complicate things. So JT's also brought back Aerodactyl, kind of looking like an ADV team with the rock spam here. Uh, Aerodactyl, this is the first time Aero has ever been used in one of our draft formats. So looking forward to see what it can do. Uh, JT also paired it with Magneton to trap annoying steel types, which if you could look at this team, you could definitely see that steels are not the, uh, not the most fun to go up against. You know, you do have Gliscor for the earthquake and everything. But again, like an offensive steel type move can definitely cause some damage. And then Ludicolo, right? He kind of covers the, those water types. And Ludicolo is just a really good Pokemon, Leech Seed. You know, it could be bulky, it could be offensive. And you know, even when like, you know, you have a team where it's just like, hey, you know what? We don't need the rain anymore. We don't need the, the sand anymore. And now we make the rain come up. And you know, now you have a different kind of wind condition. And Ludicolo is just really strong in that regard. Uh, hit him on top. Good spinner, solid fighting type. Could be a good physical check to things uh, if necessary. And then the end use, I think this is where this team kind of shines. Gardevoir and Slowking, a double psychic. Gardevoir is a fantastic Pokemon with Trace, right? As a sand team, you're going to go up against the Sandvale Pokemon that are legalized for our format. So when Cacturn and Sand Slash and those kind of guys come running, 
Gardevoir can trace their Sandville, and then you could just play a foolish little game and you know kind of kind of go from there which would definitely be uh funny and full of full of hacks but you know we can we could enjoy a little giggle every now and then uh slow king i think is like a top two pokemon in nu i don't know if it's, it's like that in actual nu play but like in draft like this guy's crazy i mean he's it's just a good tank you know it's got nasty plot reliable recovery even in sand he can make it work and then torkoal is here uh he is here that that's about all i got to say uh and then venomoth and you have a sleeper uh which is pretty cool especially if you want to try to get some free turns for like tranitar scissor gliscor to set up their dds sds and all that good stuff so overall i really like jt's team i think it's solid uh, i think there's definitely some matchups uh against some of the other teams where he might struggle but i think on paper uh this team is pretty solid so going over to adam with the second pick uh, we see he's got a Jirachi team. Uh, team name is uh, So No Head, uh, which is which is great because we did ban Iron Head in conjunction with Jirachi. Uh, I really like this one, two, three here of Jirachi, Rotom, and Swampert. Right? You think you got the fire and ground moves coming for Jirachi, right? So Rotom can handle the grounds, Swampert can handle the fire, and then the grass moves that are going to come for Swampert. Jirachi's got that. And the three of them can just prove to be really good defensively because if we look down the list like adam's got some pretty decent offensive pokemon like heracross is super strong houndoom is really good you could pursue trap annoying gengar stuff like that uh hitmonlee is a spinner it's not the best rapid spinner but like it's a solid enough pokemon and being immune to paralysis is always nice uh but it does you know it's less important because you have the main paralysis spreader uh, but again, Thunder Wave is omnipresent. And I actually do like the Altaria pick. I don't know how well it works with this team exactly, but I do think it can work. It's got Heal Bell, DD. Doesn't have the best attacking stats, but like Altaria made day two at Worlds. So like, I'm sure Adam can make something happen with this little guy. And then coming down to the end use, we got Dodrio. I think Dodrio is really good. It's fast, it's strong. Choice Scarf, Choice Band, U-Turn. This guy's cool. And then coming down here, the end, the last three end users are kind of... They're, they're here, that's for sure. Butterfree with sleep is always interesting. But again, I don't know how often we're going to be seeing it, especially because Hitmonlee being the spinner means it's going to take 50% from Stealth Rock most of the time. Dusclops is definitely a Pokemon. It's a ghost type. It's not bad. Uh, and then Gramble, he's got big attack stat. But like Dodrio is probably going to be better in most situations, but Grimble is totally justifiable when you have Intimidate, Heal Bell, uh, stuff like that. So overall, I think Adam's team is solid. Definitely, definitely a deviation from his from his usual, because we make the jokes that Adam drafts the same team every time, and this is definitely uh, far away from that. So I like that a lot for him. So I'm hoping to see him win some games. And uh, yeah, good job, Adam. Uh, so now we move on to Will's team with the third pick and took Gyarados. Uh, which is really funny because looking at his team, I actually wanted to draft like half of these guys uh, when I made my plan like an hour before the draft. Uh, so it's cool that we, we do get to see them all in all in one place. I think Gyarados, Skarmory, Blissey looks really, really scary on paper. Uh, definitely seeing a shared electric weakness among them. But like you got Blissey, you have Red Ice just as especially defensive walls that can kind of take advantage you know then kind of help out because like realistically who's the who's the physical electric like there, there really doesn't exist because you're gonna get hit with thunder punch and that's like a non-issue so and plus gyarados has intimidate you could probably live with thunder punch if you bulk out enough uh so kind of coming down the list i really like miss magius i think it's a great pokemon uh it pairs well with blissey because you have the uh fighting immunity could spread status also be a setup sweeper win condition which is really cool uh, Nidoking is a good Pokemon. Along with Arcanine, I really like these two here because they could literally do whatever the hell they want, right? Because kind of looking at these top four Pokemon, you know what they're going to do. You know, Gyarados is going to be DD offensive. Skarmory is going to be setting up spikes, being bulky. Blissey is Blissey, right? Tentacruel is going to spin, you know, throw some T-spikes down potentially. Nidoking, that guy could be physical. He could be special. Same with Arcanine. They have great abilities. They can make things happen. I really like these two here. 
I feel like the uh, so going to that big electric weakness that I kind of mentioned, Nidoking being the only ground does hurt because you do see Benectric and you might go, oh wait, hold on, he's got Lightning Rod, he's cooking. Uh, Lightning Rod doesn't work like that in Gen 4, it just draws electric type moves to you. So if you're in a double battle and your opponent uses Thunderbolt uh, and you have a Gyarados and Manectric standing next to each other, the move will hit Manectric. He is not immune, he doesn't get the special attack boost, he just gets hit by the move instead. So it kind of doesn't really do anything, which is unfortunate, uh, because that would have been really good. We could have seen a Gar Garatric, Manectos, whatever, we can workshop that later. Uh, we would have seen that be really, really strong, but unfortunately it's not the case. Uh, and then Jump Luff kind of on top of these guys is just really annoying. So there's a lot of really annoying Pokemon that could definitely make you play a long game. Uh, only thing I worry about is just like, you know, how passive this team can be. Because like if you're a team that's really strong into Gyarados and like you have a Dark type with Pursuit to really nail down this Magius, there really isn't a lot of setup offense here. Like yeah, you can run a Calm Mind Blissey. That is definitely an option. But, you know, I feel like defensively this team is super solid, definitely one of the best. Offensively, it can be lacking, which is funny because there's a Gyarados. But, yeah, this is a solid team. I like it. Oh, and Pinsir is Pinsir's a good Pokemon. He gets SD. I uh, forgot to talk about him. This guy's pretty good. Uh, but, yeah, I think I think if we had to uh, rank these three teams right now, I'm, I'm thinking it's probably JT and then probably Will and then Adam immediately right behind him. Uh, but we'll kind of go down the list and we'll talk about, like, a, you know, what is like the order of of the first half of the draft and the versus the second half and all that good stuff all right so we'll, we'll talk about aaron next uh aaron's got a very interesting team uh first thing you notice uh heatran magnazone uh earthquake who is that i've never met him before uh and then weavile is here another four times weakness uh so if you got ground and fighting coverage you're you're in a good spot uh, Melodic is a great bulky water type Pokemon. I really like that pick here. Uh, Amp Palm, uh, I mean, it's the team mascot. One in the palm, two in the fists. Interpret that how you will. Uh, of course. <laughs> uh, this guy is a dude, you know, a lot of people have been talking him up this draft. Maybe he'll do something for once, but uh, yeah, it uh, remains to be seen. Uh, Mesprit, really good utility. Gets all kinds of coverage moves. Good stealth rocker. Good Pokemon. Uh, Executor is funny. Uh, another psychic type, another bug weakness. Uh, but, I mean, Executor, he could do some cool stuff in the sun. He's a sleeper. He's got Trick Room. You know, Eggie's cool. And then the end use here. Again, these are some fellas. I really like Gligar. I think he's quite good. Uh, Hitmonchan is a solid spinner. It's a little bit better of a spinner than Hitmonlee is. But, like, it's still, you know, it's an NU for a reason. It could do things. It'll definitely help this team when it goes up against Tyranitar. Because otherwise, like, Tyranitar just rips this team apart. So, Hitmonchan is going to be good here. Uh, and then, Ariados and Electrode are, in fact, on this team. And that's cool. So, uh, it's definitely, definitely a team of all time. I think Aaron can make some funnies happen. Uh, but against a lot of the field, it may struggle. But Heatran does look really well poised into a lot of teams. And now we're going to talk about Corey's team. Uh, some of you might have been looking at it while I talked about Aaron's. Uh, this team is cracked out of its mind. Uh, Metagross Zapdos. Uh, one away from the, the fabled trio of uh, Metagross Zapdos Starmie. Uh, but yeah, Machamp is here. Uh, Venusaur. Again, like it seemed like Corey was trying to draft a uh, an old team of mine. Uh, which is really funny. We, we talked about that after the draft. Uh, but we see we see Donphan here is a really strong spinner. All right, Entei can do some things. We haven't really seen what Entei can do in draft format because nobody's ever had him, I don't think. So I'm hopeful to see some good Entei gameplay. And another one we haven't seen is for Alligator, who's really cool, uh, good offensive water. And then these end users are crazy. Like, Regirock is super good. Jinx can output a lot of damage. Grumpig is a funny pig. And of course, I mean it's Muck, you know. That's that's a cool guy. You know, he could do he could do stuff. He's got sticky hold. He's got gunk shot, explosion, you know. Shout out to the Muck fans. But yeah, I think this team is really really good. Uh definitely the best one 
uh, we've talked about so far. Probably out of all the teams, just as a spoiler, I, I really like this team. Corey's a really good player. Uh, Champ, the Zap <laughs> Champ the Zapper. Uh, shout out to Chance the Rapper. If only he made a good album. He only has good mixtapes for the, for the clarification. Uh, but yeah, this team's good. I expect it to win a lot of games and be very strong. Uh, so we're going to talk about Hall's team. Uh, down to Clown. Uh, and this team is full of guys that are going to hit you really hard. Gengar, Infernape, Dragonite. These are all three Pokemon that uh, struggle to have good switch-ins, period. Let alone when you're restricted by draft. And on top of that, Registeel, Shaman, Claydol, right? These are pretty good defensive Pokemon. I mean, Claydol is okay. But like Registeel, Shaman, good defensive Pokemon. There aren't a lot of good fire types in DPP. So there's less of that to worry about. And again, it's like, oh, you got all these fire moves. It's like, oh, congrats. You just let Dragonite in for free. And that's never a good feeling. Uh, Drapion's pretty cool. T-Spikes, knockoff, SD. Like, this guy is neat. He could do some cool stuff. Uh, only one weakness. So you got to love that. And going down to the end use, these, again, are just some guys. We haven't seen Luxray attempt to do anything. You know, Luxray's Pokemon that kind of kind of stinks but you know he's a fan favorite he's a cool cat i mean like what's not to love uh there's nothing to love about perugly except that he's faster than gengar uh that's cool anyway that's really all i have to say about hall's team i think it's neat uh i think it's got potential to do a lot of damage if your team's ill prepared for the beatdown that's coming uh and then we get to brian's team uh and Brian, Brian is a great player, fantastic player. He's the shining star of my life, after all. But this team, Breloom, Lucario, Starmie, great Pokemon. They don't really work together in a draft format as well when these are your top three options. And then we even come down here, Weezing. I think Weezing is actually the best model on this team, just in terms of like holding things together. Togekiss is here to kind of, you know, Air slash flinch, you know, be defensive. And then kind of going down, like Lantern. Uh, Brian stole Lantern from me right before my pick. I'll never forgive him, but that's okay. Uh, Tangrowth, also physically defensive. And then down, Brian was a player that's known for taking cool end use. Uh, and he's got Camera Upt. Camera Upt is, is goaded, love based camel. And then, like, Doug Trio is terrible. Mysterious is terrible. I think Licky Licky's cool. So that pick is that pick's solid. But it's like, there's good Pokemon that are here. How good are they together? Who's to say? But Brian is a good enough player. He will find a way to make this work. Uh, you know, he kind of said it after the draft where he said, this is a team that's going to win in 10 turns or lose in 15. And that's kind of fitting given, given the presentation. Uh, so not his best draft, but I'm sure Brian will, will fix things up in free agency and, you know, make a big splash. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about my team, LeBronzong's Legacy. All right, of course, Bronzong is here. We got Empoleon and Hippowdon. So I also went for a Sand Structure. Uh, kind of surprised that Hippowdon made it back in the third round. I kind of thought he'd be gone pretty early. Uh, so that was pretty cool to have him. Uh, I really like Bronzong plus Empoleon because they may share a Steel Typing, but they don't share any weaknesses at all, uh, which is really cool because Steel is the best type in this game. And all three of these top Pokemon get Stealth Rocks. They can all run a variety of sets. And Polyon can be, you know, Agility, Pattaya Berry, be Offensive, Defensive, Bronzong, same kind of deal. And then Hippo, like, Killing Hippowdon is very hard to do. So having a really sturdy defensive piece uh, is super strong. Uh, and then I took Delayed. Uh, after our uh, Scarlet Violet draft, I kind of fell in love with Delayed again. Because I loved this Pokemon as a kid, and I was like, oh, he's kind of like, you know, whatever. He's just, you know, he's just like overrated, and then I've been converted again. So I'm back on the Gallade train. This guy gets every status move in the game. 125 base attack. Really high special defense for some reason. He's good. He can uh, he could do it all, and I'm really excited to use him. Uh, now I'm coming down to my, my UUs. We got Spiritomb, Sceptile, and Agron. Agron is here for funnies. Uh, this realistically probably should have been Rhyperior, but Agron is uh, notoriously bad uh, in our draft just in terms of lore because it misses all its moves. But I'm determined. I'm going to make it work uh, as long as uh, Garatina says it's okay. But 
Uh, Sceptile, we'll talk about him. This guy's crazy. He's super fast. He's pretty strong. He can do a lot of damage. Uh, Spiritomb pairs really well with my two skill types because close combat is a pretty neutral move into my team. Uh, so having that immunity is nice. And then also Pursuit Trapping is really cool. And then my end use, we got Magmortar, uh, Tauros. I'm a big believer in Tauros Tuesday. Uh, Tauros is really cool. He's got Intimidate. He's pretty fast. He's pretty strong. Uh, Magmortar has got a lot of coverage. Again, super strong. Uh, I picked Swalot because he's funny. Uh, he's he's a pretty decent check into uh, Breloom if you have a Sleep Sack. Uh, other things because he's got a... Uh, He's got sticky hold, so he can't get knocked off. Then we got Golduck. Golduck's really cool. He's got Cloud Nine, uh, so I can have a Pokemon that isn't Rock, Steel, uh, or Ground type that heal that heals in Sand that isn't Magic Guard. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, happy with the Golduck pick. I really like my team. Uh, I think it's definitely up there in the uh, the upper echelons of of teams, especially ones that I've drafted. I'd probably put this at like my on paper probably the second best one i've drafted in dpp so hopefully uh could play well and you know have a good season uh and then we got david's team all the way over here uh david was a, a victim of having pokemon he wanted taken right before him uh quite often uh but he still managed to have a pretty threatening offensive front with flygon plus kingdra right if you don't have a good steel type you're gonna struggle into this team because they're gonna drop draco's outrages and all that stuff uh, Suicune is a good Pokemon, good setup, uh, bulky water, you just know what Suicune does, I don't need to talk about him. Uh, Cresselia is here, another really fat Pokemon, uh, to kind of provide some utility. Uh, you know, it's, it's okay, hopefully we can see Cresselia do something. Uh, and we see Dusknoir down here, this is like the second real attempt we've seen Dusknoir have, so I'm hoping it does something cool. His stats are whack, but, you know, he could probably do it. Uh, Blaziken. Uh, David had Blaziken in uh, ADV with Suicune, so he's bringing the boys back to uh, hopefully have a good showing. Uh, and then Steelix is the steel type of choice. My cats just uh, rolled down the stairs wrestling each other. I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys heard that, but it's pretty loud. Uh, anyway, uh, Steelix is here. Uh, best steel type remaining at that point in the draft. Uh, solid ground type. Uh, Steelix is okay. Uh, he can definitely do some stuff. So that's neat. And then down in the end use, uh, Porygon 2 is a David classic. He always seems to find a way to have this thing on his team. Uh, and then he paired up the Sandveil guys of Cacturn and Sand Slash for spikes and spin, and also to annoy the two sand teams that we've talked about. Uh, so looking, we'll, we'll see what, what happens with these guys. You know, they can they could definitely make life uh, pretty hard for, for us sand teams. Uh, but overall, that was the uh, that was the Diamond Conference, also known as our Major Leagues. So if I had to give a top three teams, I think Corey's number one, and I don't think it's particularly close. Uh, and then followed by myself and JT, I think are the top three. And then after that, I would probably lean towards some combo of like maybe Will, Adam, and David. Uh, again, just on paper, no games have been played yet. But that's kind of where my my mind is thinking. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think about the teams for the for the Diamond Conference. Uh, but now we have we have more teams to talk about, so we are gonna we're gonna scroll down here and we got we got the Pearl Conference. And let me tell you, if I can get my centering right. There we go. Let me tell you, uh, THT's team right here, Titar and Feathering. Uh, this shit's ridiculous. First off, Tarantar number one. Makes sense. Pair with Skarmory and Flygon. Uh, after watching ADV, Chris said, you know what? I liked my team, and I liked I liked the combo that that I, I had myself with Skarm and Flygon. He said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And this is probably the strongest one, two, three uh, OUs that we have. It's definitely up there. Like Again, we have another really, really good sand structure. Shaman, great bulky grass type to cover these guys. And then right when you think, oh, maybe I could do something with, like, a good electric with HP ice coverage, then there's Lantern, who really kind of shuts that down and really makes the building against this team a lot more difficult. And then Weezing, really good partner with Tyranitar, because a lot of Titar's big weaknesses being Earthquake, close combat, stuff like that, Weezing's got that on lock. 
You come in, you know, you do what you need to do. You spread burns, paint split up, you do wheezing things. And then down in end you, we got Slow King Gardevoir paired up again. Magmortar joins this crew. And just really good Pokemon. Dusclops again is present. I love this team. I can't say enough good about it. Uh, and Hippotop is a good spinner. Uh, so it, it checks all the boxes. It's pretty good. Uh, I think I think this is the best team in the Pro Conference and arguably the best team, period. I would probably tie it up there with uh, Corey's team uh, from the Diamond Conference. So we're going to talk about Ernest's team. Wish Obama's star. That's my favorite name on here, by the way. Uh, this shit's hilarious. Uh, we got Jirachi, Suicune, Machamp. Really strong Pokemon together. Jirachi plus Suicune. Really good special offense. Jirachi just with all the utility. But Champ and Jirachi together, I mean, it's just a recipe for degeneracy. And I think that's funny. The only thing I think is holding this team back is the presence of Mr. President himself. The presence of Hale really limits Jirachi, Suicune, and Machamp and what they're able to do in terms of longevity. Uh, which is unfortunate because Obama Snow is a neat guy. But I still think he can make it work. Especially paired with Dawn Fan, Dusknor, excuse me, and Moltres. I think Moltres is super good on this team. Uh, excuse me. Because of the presence of Dawn Fan to spin away the rocks. Right, these two kind of work really well together. And you have enough good water checks to kind of, you know, bolster yourself. Uh, and then we go down to the Anus. Manectric is here. Gligar, Grumpig, and Clampearl. Clampearl's making an appearance. Uh, you know, he does have some Trick Room setters. Dusknor, Jirachi. Grumpig probably learns it. Uh, Clampearl could do some funny stuff. Guy does way too much damage uh, with his Deep Sea Tooth. Uh, it's really fun to watch your opponent's Pokemon die to a Clam. But overall, Ernest's team is pretty solid. I think he can definitely make some moves with it. I'm excited to see uh, how he pilots it and to see if I bite my tongue about Obama Snow uh, just being here. Uh, but now we're going to talk about uh, Dante's team, the Sinnoh Rowan Trotters. Uh, another great name. Uh, Brian drafted this team. Uh, I really like it. Uh, Clefable and Raikou not present in the first half of the draft. Uh, but are now present here. Uh, I mean, Clef is Clef is Clef. Ask David in the comments what he thinks about Clefable. Uh, Raikou, Raikou's Raikou. Big dumb electric. Polion, super good. Delayed. Uh, Miss Bay like all these Pokemon are just really really solid. They all can do something, and I think Dante can definitely make some magic happen with this team. There's good enough guys to pull out a game to pull out some games and hopefully do well. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, then we got Bandit's team. Uh, Poppin' Perts and Sippin' on Hitmonlee. Uh, some bars here. We see another Gyarados Blissey. Uh, but what difference, uh, the difference from Will's team uh, is a little bit more offense. Just a little bit. Uh, just with, you know, Houndoom, Hitmonlee. Venusaur is a bit more offensive than Tentacruel is. Uh, but, you know, they're... This is, a, this is a team where I think the end use are terrible. Uh, like, actually, like, this, like, like, the bus is fine, but, like, overall, just as a group, it could be a lot better. Uh, so you're probably going to see a lot of these top guys. And a lot of them do share some weaknesses. A lot of fighting weaknesses. A lot of ground weaknesses. So a lot of pressure on Gyarados defensively. But, I mean, you know, he's, he's that guy. He can make it work. I like this team. Uh, I think it could definitely do well. It can win some games. Uh, yeah, that's kind of all I got to say about it. So, yeah, we're going to move on. We're talking about Jordan's team. Uh, Infernape's Ingrates. Uh, we have Infernape, of course. Uh, Bronzong and Dragonite. I really like this core. Bronzong super good defensively with uh, Infernape Dragonite just doing obscene amounts of damage. And then Uxie is also here uh, as another great defensive piece. Uh, again, similar to how I talked about how Zong and Empo don't share weakness, uh, Uxie and Bronzong also don't share weakness, despite both being psychic types, which is pretty cool. Uh, they're both really good stealth rock setters. Uh, they can do a lot for the team. Uh, I think Blastoise is a solid spinner. 
Uh, Ludicolo is really good here. Uh, and ro base Rotom uh, can definitely make things happen. Uh, scarf sets, things like that. Uh, is is a solid pick. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, and these edus are really cool. Uh, I think, Por I mean, Porygon 2 is great. We also see Rampardos. So, and then I'm kind of looking back at this team and I'm going, wow. Jordan's got a little trick room mode that's kind of threatening with Bronzong and Rampardos. With some decent setters with Uxie, Zong itself, even P2. Uh, so that's really cool. I'm uh, I'm excited to see uh, if she pulls off any fun Rampardos things. So I think that'd be awesome. Uh, so kind of breaking down this first half of of these teams, we'll kind of go over a little a little top five uh, amongst them. We'll order them. Uh, right now, I'd say THT far and away number one. And then I think I would go Ernest Jordan Bannon. Uh, nah, I don't know. I'm. I'd say I, I think about this a little bit. I think Ernest. I'd go Ernest Dante Jordan Bannon. I think. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. It's they're all, they're all relatively close after after THT. So uh, yeah. So we'll see about the other four teams. Uh, and we got Frank. Frank, newcomer. He's down with the thickness. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, he trying to Breloom together again, like it's. 2021 all over again uh my cats are currently uh freaking out on the stairs again i'm sorry if you can hear that um starming is pretty good defensively with them really good firewater grass jolteon is is here another fast offensive pokemon uh ambipom exists i don't want to talk about ambipom anymore hariyama is a good fighting type it's bulky you could do a shit ton of damage Scyther is really cool uh with the u-turn now you have the rapid spin support uh, from Starmie, you can make things happen. Uh, and then these NUs, we got Skuntank and Driftblim, which I think are legitimately good Pokemon. Uh, Skuntank with Pursuit, Explosion, Driftblim uh, with Unburden. I just learned that Driftblim has Unburden in Gen 4. I thought it was a Gen 5 ability. Uh, so that's cool. Dugtrio sucks. Shellgun is my beloved son. Uh, back in the day, I... I got the, to the top of the ladder using Shellgun uh, in this tier. Uh, that was funny. Uh, it was a very mediocre team. He's basically playing 5v6 the whole time. But Shellgun did get some kills, so that's fun. Uh, and we got Lily's team, the Tyranitar Task Force, which is funny because I don't think this team handles Tyranitar well at all. So let's talk about it. Uh, Azelf is a great lead. It's got good offensive stats. It can do some things. Uh, Rotom is a great Pokemon. It shares a lot of weaknesses with Azelf. So that can that can definitely complicate things. But I think defensively, Rotom is really good here. Lucario, Lucario is gonna have to carry a lot of weight this season. He's gonna have to he's gonna have to do it all. And you know, if there's anyone that could set up and win a game, it's him. Uh, Crobat. Crobat's really fast. Uh, it kind of works a lot like Azelf, where it's like a good in the lead slot, just for like, instead of getting up rocks, it's like an anti-rock Pokemon. Uh, so, you know, that's... Uh, and then coming down, Cloyster. Cloyster's pretty cool. Spike, spin, boom. Pretty good defense, uh, physically defensive wall. Uh, Alakazam, I think, overlaps with Azelf a little too much, to where it's like, you know, it's like, you know, yeah, there's the rocks difference, but like... It's a frail Pokemon that's really good special attacker. You know, it can... There's a little overlap, but I like Zam as a guy, so I think it's okay. Uh, Magneton, a trap to steals. Honestly, his team really doesn't like steel types, so I don't hate that pick. Uh, and then the... And then the Anus, I do really like these. Uh, Cacturn and Sandslash teaming up again uh, for another round to ruin Sand teams. So that's fun. Uh, I think Lapras is solid here. Uh, and Camerupt, again... I can't talk uh, enough about camera being super good. A uh, good rock option. But yeah, the thing with uh, with Lily's team, and even Frank's team, are the limited stealth rock options. Uh, especially with uh, Frank's team, because right now it is just Heatran and, and Doug, but Doug is, Doug is not a Pokemon. So it's got, you got Sandslash, Camel, and you got Azelf, which are solid enough rockers to where I think Lily can, can overcome that problem. Uh, Frank is not going to uh, 
enjoy it as much because Heatran's going to be forced to run Stealth Rock every week. And that's going to kind of make it predictable, a little bit more limiting. But overall, I still think it's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it. That's that's about all I got. I think Lily's team is 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 decent enough. I think it can win some games. Uh, but I think some free agency will definitely help uh, with a couple with a lot of matchups. Uh, so we'll talk about Tim's team. A whale of a time. Whale Lord is here. Fuck yeah, love that guy. Uh, I see another Metagross Aptos. Uh, this time paired with Kingdra. Uh, as the water type of choice. Really strong, does a lot of damage. Having a dragon and a steel on a team is very good. Uh, Mammoth Swine does pair pretty well with Zapdos, so I do like that pick. These top four cover each other pretty well. And then coming down to the UUs, Spiritune's a great Pokemon. Pursuit, Spin Block, Status, all that stuff. Arcanine's great. A lot of utility, you can do a lot of things. Uh, love, love this dog. Uh, Mill Tank is awesome. He's a good stealth rocker, reliable recovery, Thunder Wave, Body Slam. Yeah, Mill Tank's cool. Uh, the cow is now. Hell yeah. Uh, and then the end use, and I love Vile Plume. Uh, I think this guy's incredible. Regirock is really good. Waylord's funny. And Hitmonchan, decent enough spinner. Gives you a fighting type option. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I, uh, I'm into Tim's team. I think looking at uh, his opponents, he might have some tougher matchups, especially with like a team like Chris's, because uh, a lot of like you know Zapdos is gonna have to do a lot of heavy lifting. Like that's a that's a tougher matchup for it, you know, amongst other things. But I think this team in the right position can do very very well, and I'm looking forward to seeing it in action. Uh, and last but not least, we have Ethan's team. Ethan was not present at draft. So Will kind of took the took the reins and and did all that. Uh, Gengar is is very strong. Uh, we see Scizor plus Celebi. Uh, some four times weaknesses here uh, that are you know unfortunate. We talked about Scizor uh, before. It's a great Pokemon, good steal. Uh, Celebi is finally making its draft appearance uh, for today. I think it's solid. It provides enough utility to Ethan's team to where he can make it work. Uh, I will say I don't like that Mantine is the water. And, and just like looking at the team, like fire is pretty free into it if you could just spam fire types. But again, as I mentioned before, fire, you know, fire types aren't that common. They're not always the best in DPP just because the rocks weakness and things like that. But Togekiss is solid. Mesprit is really good utility, as I mentioned. We finally see Nidoqueen uh, coming into its own. This is a great Mon. Lots of coverage, stealth rock, T spikes. It's it's a Nido. It can do whatever it wants. Uh, Blaziken, good offensive. Uh, this team is good offensive. It's just the defensive integrity is not the best. You're kind of relying on Nidoqueen and I guess Celebi to really do everything. And you know, Togekiss and Messi to an extent, but you know, little little harder to pull off with them. Uh, and then the end use, talking about Mantine, it's fine, it's good, but as the only water, not great. Uh, because you can just easily, like, you know, a water switches into water, if the other one has HP electric, you're going to lose that exchange. Uh, Armaldo is a Pokemon of all time. Does he get sp I think he gets spin. Yeah, he's a spinner. He's okay. He's a spinner weak to rocks, which kind of stinks, but what can you do? Uh, he's funny, he's cool. Uh... You know those little red dots? Are the red dots on his on his head? Are those his eyes or are they the ones on the outside? Because it's like, as a kid, I kind of thought like those little dots in the middle were his eyes. Uh, but then when I learned they were on the outside, he wasn't as cool to me. Uh, but anyway, uh, Jump Pluff is awesome. Tauros, Tauros is a beast. But I think on term, in terms of like strength on paper, I think Ethan's team is definitely on the weaker end. Uh, but yeah, so let's rank them real quick. Uh, number one is THT. Uh, I got no, no doubt about that. And I want to say number two, I'm leaning towards Frank despite the limited stealth rock options. Uh, I still think his team on paper looks really good and there's nothing a little free agency can't fix up. Uh, so I'll put Frank at, Frank at number two, uh, in my opinion. And then I'd probably go, I'd go Ernest. And then I would go... 
I'd go Tim. Uh, I, I think I, I would go Dante, then Tim. Uh, and then Jordan, Bannon, Lily, and then Ethan for, for my ranking on this team. Again, this is just looking on paper. None of the games have been played yet. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's it for the Pro Conference. Uh, I think overall the best two teams are THT and Corey. Uh, and then if we're rounding out a top five, I think we come up here. We look at JT and myself for that three and four spot. And then that number five is really is really up for grabs. I think, I think I'm leaning more towards Frank, but I think Will is like... If it's like Frank's like 5A, Will's like 5B. That's my... That's my take. I think... I don't know. I changed my mind on the day. But uh, I've been talking for a while now, so... I should probably go see if my cats are okay. So, thanks for listening. I hope you guys are looking forward to uh, the official start of the podcast once our first week games end. Uh, we'll have our usual cast uh, in-house, and we'll have a good time. Uh, so, until then, have a great day, and stay stay, uh, stay warm, because it started... Like, I woke up, and it was, like, in the 50s. And, like, that's kind of wild, because it's, it's August. Like, dude, it's insane.